Here we'll talk about departments in organizations and how specialization helps departmentalization and that's that is represented in the organizational structure. After managers organize or assign specialized tasks to individuals or to groups of individuals, the next they, managers will next organize workers doing similar work into groups to make them not only easier to manage, but also give them other individuals that have similar skills so they can build their collective knowledge of the specific tasks that they're all working on. Departmentalization is the grouping of jobs into working units, usually called departments. These units, or they could be called work units or work groups or divisions. As we shall see, departments are commonly organized by function or product, or maybe geographic reason, region, sometimes even by customer. Most companies use more than one departmentalization plan to enhance productivity. For example, many consumer goods manufacturers have departments for specific product lines, for beverages, for frozen dinners, for canned goods, and so on, as well as departments for dealing with what's we call staff functions, which are dealing with legal issues or purchasing, finance, human resources, and other various kinds of business functions. Let's look at some of the ways to approach this. Functional departmentalization groups jobs that perform similar functional activities such as finance, manufacturing, marketing, and human resources into their departments. This approach is common in small organizations but a weakness of functional departmentalization is that because it tends to emphasize departmental units rather than the organization as a whole, decision making that involves, that involves more than one department may be slow. This is what they call silos. In other words, you're working in your own like a corn silo and you don't really talk to people doing other tasks in different departments. This may slow down decision making requires greater coordination and can actually cause organizations not to recognize things that have to happen in the market or changes that are occurring that they need to, they should be dealing with because people are looking downward in, internally into their various silos. And there's product departmentalization. As you might guess, this organizes jobs into the various products of the firm. Functional activities like production, finance, marketing, and others are located within each product division. Consequently, organizing by product duplicates functions and resources. It emphasizes the product and bringing things together at the product rather than the function level. Rather, and so it, it um, tries to support products, but not necessarily the organization's overall objectives. However, this does simplify decision making within products and it helps coordinate all activities related to a product or product group. Note we now have duplication and we have focus on the particular product and not necessarily how products might work together or how sales might be, destruct, be constructed at a larger level to get multiple products into a customer sale. Another approach is geographic departmentalization. This is where you group jobs according to geographic locations, such as a state, a region, a country, a continent. Multinational co uh, corporations often use a geographic approach because the vast differences between different regions mean that it's easier to organize various functions within a region and various products within a region so that the, the needs of that local that local marketplace, the cultural needs of that local marketplace can be addressed with different customer sets, suppliers, and the like. However, organizing by region requires a large administrative task, staff and a, and a well-organized well and extensive control system to coordinate all of the operation ta and tasks that are duplicated across the many different regions. You start to have costs, administrative costs increase, and there's a, there's a becomes an imperative to make sure that's all coordinated and managed to keep activities moving ahead effectively. Lastly, we talk about customer or industry departmentalization. 
This arranges jobs around the needs of various types of customers. Customer departmentalization, like geographic departmentalization, does not focus on the organization as a whole, but rather on the particular customer's needs or the industry, series of customers or industry needs. It therefore requires large administrative staffs in the back office to coordinate the operations of these various groups. Let's take a look at PepsiCo for a second. It's organized into various business units. PepsiCo America Foods, which introduces brands such as Frito-Lay, includes brands such as Frito-Lay, North America, Quaker Foods North America, and all the Latin American food and snack businesses. PepsiCo America Beverages includes Mountain Dew, Lipton, Tropicana, those kinds of things. PepsiCo Europe includes regional brands like Wim Dim Don and Marbo, as well as beverage, food, and snack businesses in Europe and South Africa. PepsiCo Asia, Middle East and Africa, which includes all beverage, food, and snack businesses in these regions. So you can see that PepsiCo uses product, regional, uh, very customer, various kinds of um, of departmentalization across their very, very large corporation. It's got, uh, it separates foods from beverages in Americas, but not other places, and it certainly s uh, separates its geographic regions. So you can see that these are models that are used to organize activity. In effect, you're simplifying how you're going about managing the relationships among people in the organization so it doesn't get too complex or confusing. But in every different case, there are uh, it, each case has there's a trade-off between efficiency and being able to manage all of that complexity. Uh, core to this idea is the notion or the difference or the ideas of authority and responsibility, which we'll talk about in the next lecture.